There are many comprehensive and great reviews on the Ellie Phone S8, but today I feel like you need a video to show you just how well or not well Ellie Phone S8 works on a daily basis for everybody's everyday needs from beginning to end. Let's get straight into the video. This beautifully designed phone comes in at under £200, making it one of the most affordable phones on the market with these specific specs. Now I'm going to try and avoid getting into too much detail on those specs as there are many other videos probably being suggested next to this one, so I'm going to try and focus solely on daily usage and operation. Now Gearbest has been triumphing in offering consumers around the world affordable technology, so I've kindly asked for further discount for this product and you'll be able to find all the details of this in the description along with some great discounted accessories to go alongside the phone. So make sure you check that out because everybody likes a saving. Now in the box you get all the conventional bits and bobs such as the charger, user guide, SIM tray pin and much much more. However, surprisingly no headphones, which was a slight bummer, but nevertheless, the essentials are there. Now my main driver comes in the form of the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, and it served me so well so far, but I wanted to chuck my 900 pound phone in the drawer and opt for using a cheaper, much more affordable phone like this one. My aim was to see just how well the phone handled my busy lifestyle and overall needs, and whether or not it could even remotely compare itself to the sheer power of the Note 8. Now, unless you haven't been watching this video properly, you can see just how vibrant and beautiful this phone screen is. And with a resolution of 2560 by 1440, everything is delivered to you with beauty. It's just so surprising to see a price point like this and such a crisp picture you're actually getting. Now, the battery is built in with 4000 milliamps, and that's a handful amount of power to keep you going through the day and thanks to its lightning bolt connection, a full charge isn't that far away either. So I tend to check my emails first and it's a delight to know just how fast and smooth the interface is. Its stock Android features certainly become apparent once you use this phone more and more. It takes me around a good 30 minutes to get to work and that can consist of music playing at its finest. And by the time I get to work, we're looking at a reduction of about 5%, which you have to admit is really good considering I would have probably lost about 15% with my Note 8. Now, one of the features I will say I really do adore is its fingerprint reader. It's really responsive and it just picks up that demand of being able to just pick up your phone and just touch it and it work. Now, you find that with the Note 8, it tends to slip on that sometimes. The fingerprint reader does go off guard. Now I will say that home button can be a pain because it isn't physical and it does require you to tap once to go back, tap twice to go straight to your home page, or hold for your background tasks. Sounds simple, but having that all in one button can become slightly more confusing and hard to get used to than you'd think. Now, I do like to listen to some music out loud and I tend to not faff about with external speakers. So my phone's onboard speakers are certainly my main go-to. Now, in terms of quality, they're okay, they're not fantastic. I mean, once you turn up the volume, you do tend to hear a bit of crackling, but they do offer sufficient volume and not too much of that tinny echo some of the cheaper phones have on the market. I love photography and to be honest, this camera did shock me. We're rocking a 21 megapixel camera and you'll be able to see just how vibrant and sharp some of the pictures are from the rear camera. There are plenty of customization and options such as panorama mode that can be achieved. I wouldn't say if you're after a phone purely for its camera, this one would provide that because that would probably be a lie. It really wouldn't, but it's certainly sufficient and reasonably better than expected for the price. Now at midday, I began to sit and realize how much I really did like this phone. 
every time I glanced at it, I just wanted to pick it up. I actually began to rely and fully trust its capabilities and demands I was putting on it. Its responsiveness and overall fluent user face had me kind of thinking, why are we paying so much for big name brand phones when any phone and many other brands are producing affordable and powerful phones like these? I got home around 6 p.m. with 34% battery and I honestly did use this phone frequently. Maybe the Note 8 isn't the best phone to compare it to in regards to its battery, but I wouldn't have even got to about 4 p.m. with that. Unfair comparison, I know, because a Note 8 is known for its bad battery. At the end of the day, when it comes to buying a phone, you can look at the specs as much as you like, but it ultimately comes down to the need of the consumer. For me, personally, I was completely shocked at the performance and speed of the phone. It made email and social media updates along with heavy workloads a breeze. The overwhelming beauty of that almost beverless 6 inch screen just added to the pleasure of the tasks, delivering crisp and vibrant detail to everything. And the battery life, well, let's be honest, it's just an added bonus. Whatever you're on the market for, take into account your needs and wants and whether or not a phone of this category and affordable price range is for you. But I can probably safely say my Note 8 might stay in the drawer for a couple more days. Don't forget to check the description for some money off the tech featured in this video. Don't forget to subscribe, there's always frequently updated affordable tech and gadgets for you here. Till next time.